Hey everybody, welcome back to Dash Lab. Um, kind of into this uh, mode of uh, scrapping these treadmills for the DC motor inside, variable speed. And I pick them up for free, you know, the side of the road or sometimes uh, they're advertised for free. I picked this one up, it's tiny, so I don't expect there's going to be a very big motor in there. Um, it's got some sort of an error uh, when you go to start it. It gives you an E06. I didn't even look it up. I don't really care about that. So we're going to take it apart and see what we can find as far as the motor goes. And then take any good parts we can and scrap them. So I'll get some tools and we'll get at it. Okay, so we'll take this part off here. Got the screws out on the other side. And oh, wow. So, yeah, small, but uh, might be good for something. Belt, pulley, all that stuff. And there's the old control board. So, uh, I'll rip that out and we'll bring it on the bench and see what we can do with it. All right, well, here's the aftermath. There's the, uh, the box of hardware that I got. Some nice feet. Um, I'm assuming I'll have to check, but I think a lot of these, uh, this hardware is metric, which is kind of nice. Um, there's a bunch of self tappers in here, which are. Doesn't matter if they're metric or not, but they'll they will be. Um, again, a couple nice rollers. Something down the road. Of course, I'll need that uh, pulley that will match. Um, I kind of put everything together. There was a couple of controllers for the hands, a start stop, and uh, speed. They also had uh, some sort of probably conductivity meters going here. I ripped those wires off by mistake. The uh, kill switch, right? And everything else seems to be, uh, there's your control board. Doesn't seem to be any sort of, uh, you know, name brand sort of board. Not a lot on it, big cap, uh, tiny transformer. I can't imagine that's doing much, probably other than maybe stepping it down for the five volts for the electronics up there. Uh, da -da 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 relay, of course fuse now the only thing that I found weird and I'm not sure if I did this or not uh, on the on off switch I pulled out uh, this and this tab came out from inside there and it doesn't look like it's broken off so that goes in there somehow and we have these going through and I'm not sure if this I don't imagine this does any sort of uh, circuit breaker kind of thing. Oh, and the other thing, I took the, the tread and I put it down here and I integrated it into my workbench. I don't know why, but I just didn't think I was going to keep it because I got one from a couple of the other treadmills and I thought that, uh, whoop, okay, that's spring-loaded. Okay, I remember that. And okay, good, good news, good news. Whoop bad news that just kind of fell apart there yeah these just kind of go through and are pushed through so it must have just uh, mechanically become unengaged disengaged so I should be able to get that back in there somehow And uh, maybe just continue on with the switch the way it should be. Uh, okay, all right, so that sits in there. These rockers, okay, are they different? No, they're kind of the same. But which way do they go in? Hmm, they're silver. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to fiddle around with this. Just give me a second. Okay, apparently it, it only really goes together one way. I had this flipped around and uh, it didn't work. But when I, when I flipped around the other way, it just kind of all snapped back together. 
So, we were getting an Air 1. when we powered it up. Whoop. Uh, so I've got basically everything back in place where it was. The motor, there's not a lot of connections. I don't see any, um, any, hang on a second. I don't see any, any uh, thermal overload on the motor. So quite often um, you'll see uh, two blue wires going into the motor. So it'll be a one to a thermal switch in here that allows you to understand whether or not um, uh, it's overheating. And if it does, it, it's in line with the line here and that would shut it off. And I'm forgetting what else was on here. We got that, we got the AC, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> uh, I think actually they, I think these were like that. You know what? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, I am going to go and look at the footage and try to figure out exactly how that goes together. Okay, <laughs> so let me just back up here. I had this like this, and we know that this is an interruptible circuit in here with the rocker switch, and this is an interruptible circuit. And I know the two red ones were beside each other. Okay, probably I thought like that, and then I thought, well, if I put the black, the line, and the neutral over here, all that's going to do is cause a dead short on that line. It's either going to take out my power supply, my breaker here, or the breaker in the basement. What I just remembered is that this switch was mounted horizontally. And yes, the two were beside each other, but they were on different circuits. And this one says uh, AC line. So that'd be the black. And this says AC neutral. So what in effect we're doing, unlike a lot of other switches, is when we're opening and closing this, we are opening both the line and the neutral. So you're not just opening up the line, which happens a lot of times, but in this case, we're interrupting both. So when you turn it off, you've opened up that circuit and that circuit. So you've broken that. So this basically is just the black continuing on to here and the neutral continuing on to there. All right, I am gonna put my grounds together with my special patented ground making clamp. I have an alligator switch. Okay, so let's just see. Um, what is happening? Uh, are there LEDs on here? If there are, they're not readily apparent. So uh, again, there's I, I, there's not even a name on this board. I have the likelihood of me finding some information on that are probably pretty low, but uh, nevertheless. Okay. So let's just do the. This is off. Off, off. Okay, quick little test. No smoke. Okay, I had got power to it. You can see there, that's coming on. Okay, now I'm going to turn that on and try it. Beep. Okay, got power there. Saying ARF. Let's just do a start. Well, there are LEDs. Hey, it's working better than before. Never got this far before. No feedback from the, uh, no encoder on there to say that there's feedback. So this board doesn't care whether there's uh, feedback or not. Uh, what do we got here? Speed control.
Wow. So that's as low as it goes, five. Lots of torquey. Lots of torque. Well, a fair amount of torque. A ten. Yeah, a fair amount. So, there was something wrong somewhere that uh, this board gave that error six, but I'm not getting error six anymore. Uh, we've got a start stop over here. Start with a countdown. Let me see something. Hey, you know what? When I go stop, I had about a speed of 10, 12. When I turn it back on, 12, 13 goes right back to the original setting. That's kind of nice. So there's another motor for something. 90 volts, 3700 RPM, 800 watts. So what's that kind of roughly run at 3700 RPM with one horsepower? Nominally. Okay. So now the next big question is, can I get rid of that somehow? What is it feeding down here? Is it, uh, is it a resistance? Uh, well, I don't think so. I think it's resistance. Let me just anti-plug this. So there's the, the board. Okay. So nice thing, one nice thing is that all these are just push buttons. These are actual uh, hard uh, push buttons. So that means that these are just shorts. So I could at the very least just have this with the appropriate um, physical contacts, right? That, that wouldn't be so bad. If I mounted that in a box and just had some push buttons, what push buttons would I actually need here? Well, I'd need start and speed. So I would, re and well, I guess stop, and you could have a safety switch. So if I had four, and they're momentary, that's a nice thing too, they're momentary. If I had four momentary push buttons and that circuit, which is probably no doubt putting out a pulse width modulated signal, I could control this whole thing. So that board, and the thing is, that board's no bigger than this. I don't need the whole thing. Even if, even if I had the whole thing, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, but yeah. And as far as the speaker goes, I don't even know where the speaker part of it was. But, um, yeah. So I guess what I should do next, you know what? Okay, looking out here, these are the outputs. What do we got? Oh, they're not the outputs. Oh, it just says resistors. So pull up or pull down resistors. And we've got five signals not labeled. And that's going down to the board. So there's only one, two, three, four, five. So that's gonna be pretty well Start, stop, go, no go. Start, stop, the ground, and then probably the pulse width modulation. So I could use my PWM board if I had to, to, uh, to control this too, but then get rid of all that other stuff. All right, I'm gonna take this part a little bit more and see what's inside. Okay, so in the end, um, <clears throat> I was trying to scope out here and see where the uh, pulse width modulation is coming from. Not really getting a good clear signal on that. Um, it is possible that there's some sort of voltage divider 
going in on in here and it's sending a voltage maybe this could all be done with a pot but I got thinking you know this is not that big this is not that big that's not that big I could put all this in one board I've got my push buttons here um, I got a display uh, that would not be overly uh, cumbersome one of the nice things I like about this is uh, if I go up to let's say uh, my speed here and I'll just increase it to hopefully you can see that so my speed would be say 40 kilometers an hour okay so the speed probably be 3.0 whatever that is if I go stop now it's not a fast stop that could be a little bit of a problem but I think with the load on it maybe not so bad but when I go back to start it goes back to the previous setting so that's kind of a nice feature um, so I think I'm not gonna bother trying to re-engineer this uh, just to get rid of this because it's all gonna go in a box anyway so when I do do it um, and I don't know what I'm gonna use for it this is kind of small not a lot of uh, horsepower there so maybe the drill press it all depends on how it's pulled and geared but um, yeah so there you go one more piece of exercise equipment that nobody will ever have to uh, ignore and hang um, clothes on in the corner of the bedroom uh, it's been probably never used so much as it has been today and uh, that's all I got for you this time on Dust Lab. Hopefully you had fun. Uh, don't get any on you. Be safe. See you next time. Bye-bye.